So the MCAT is a hard exam. I remember when I first began studying for the MCAT, I thought to myself, where are the people on earth who can solve these problems? These passages literally seem like they're impossible. However, I promise with time, it does get better. With time, it's an uphill battle, but with time, it does get better. And one day you'll be doing a passage and you'll realize this is doable. You'll realize I've learned about PKAs and I've learned about molecular weight weights and polyprotic acids. And one day you'll be taking a passage and you'll know when you're ready. You'll know that spending more time studying won't make a difference because I've put in my due diligence to master all these concepts. So what I recommend is two weeks before your official MCAT, doing a practice exam, either through Next Step or the official AMC, two weeks before your official date, do one of these practice MCATs. And then you'll get your score, and based on that score, you'll know if you're ready or not. And if you don't get the score you were hoping for, postpone your MCAT. So when you first begin studying for the MCAT, I recommend going on Google and typing in AAMC foundational concepts. Click on the link and you'll see all these foundational concepts you're responsible for for the MCAT. And something really important to realize is the MCAT only cares about these big picture foundational concepts. The MCAT does not care about little nitty gritty esoteric details. The MCAT does not care about memorizing every little small detail. Rather, the MCAT will reward mastering these big picture concepts. And there's not that many big picture concepts. However, the MCAT will do a fantastic job at really testing to make sure you truly deeply understand these few big picture concepts. They'll find ways to test your knowledge and, and ask you to apply these big picture concepts in novel contexts. So again, I recommend really mastering these big picture concepts. So for some practical advice, while you're taking your MCAT in the beginning, you'll have a 10 minute tutorial to familiarize yourself with the graphic interface. So I recommend during that 10 minute tutorial, writing down all your important keyboard commands on your notepad. For example, control T for periodic table and control F for flagging the question. So during that initial 10 minute tutorial, write down all your keyboard commands, which will prepare you for while you're actually doing the real MCAT. Now, something else to realize is this is the official format of the MCAT. First, it's the chem physics section, then the car section, then bio, etc. But each section is roughly 95 minutes long to solve 60 questions. So each minute, each uh, section is roughly 95 minutes. So you have 95 minutes to solve 60 questions. So therefore, when you're on question 30, you should have roughly 45 minutes left. So therefore, if you're on question 30 and you have 38 minutes left, you really need to pick up the pace. If you're on question 30 and you have 52 minutes left, then you have plenty of time. So I recommend writing this down right now. When you're on question 30, you should have at least 45 minutes left. Really, you should have a little more so you have some extra time at the end to review your flagged questions. But but this is what I recommend. Question 30, you should have at least 45 minutes left. And this is my personal experience. When I was on this final section, my body was fried. This was not a mental willpower thing. My body was physically fried. So what I wish I had done is right before this last break, maybe drink a Red Bull or some coffee to, to just uh, as a pick me up for this final section to end up strong. But that's my personal physiology. Every Everyone's different. So again, while you're studying the, pa the uh, while you're doing a passage, the passages will be hard. You'll see very complex, challenging passages. However, the questions are doable. These questions will, they can be solved. So the mentality I had while solving questions is I thought to myself, the person to my right who's currently taking the MCAT, they've solved it. They, they figured out how to solve this problem. They, they found which part of the passage is relevant and they found a way to solve this question and this question is doable. So just keep that mentality, realize this is doable. And it, normally it's really not so bad. The passages can be really challenging, but the questions are doable. So what I recommend is if you have a really complex passage where you have some kind of complex pathway, I recommend writing down the components to just help visualize the pathway.
And also, something I noticed with my MCAT is a lot of the times I had to deal with process of elimination. For example, this comes from an actual next step practice exam, but this is just some made up question I just made up. But for example, let's say in a solution with a pH of 2, what will Caterpillar's net charge be? So first of all, we see oxidized makes absolutely no sense. So we know that can't be the answer. And we also know at a low pH, the ionizable groups will be protonated, so they'll be positively charged. So negative 4 also doesn't make sense. So now we're left with 0 or positive 1. So we see at a pH of 2, which, which groups will, will, be, will be protonated or not. So again, we think between zero or positive one. So normally what happens is you'll have some kind of process of elimination. And nor what I noticed a lot with my MCAT is I knew A absolutely can't be true. I know D absolutely can't be true. And I'm pretty sure C can't be true. And I may not know if B is right, but I do know that these other three options are absolutely cannot be the right answer. So therefore through process of elimination, I know B is right. And while I was doing the MCAT, I was really stressed out because I didn't know for a fact if B was right. However, a lot of the times you'll deal with process of elim elimination. So again, it is doable. And also, I recommend doing a lot of practice exams, either through Next Step or Official AMC, because you'll see terminology being used over and over again. For example, I kept saying things like A233E. What does this mean? This means the alanine residue, which was the 233rd residue, so the 233rd alanine residue was mutated or substituted with an agglutamate residue. So you'll see this kind of terminology, this convention. You'll also see things like GP delta mu. So what does this mean? This means the GP protein had its mu domain deleted. That's what this delta means. So this mu was deleted from the GP protein. So you'll see this kind of convention that you'll only get familiar with through doing practice MCAT exams. But again, at the end of the day, there's nothing that can substitute putting in the time and energy and effort. The MCAT will is very well designed. It's designed very well and they'll know, they'll be able to weed out the people who didn't put in the time and effort. So just one last visualization. Normally we live around 80 years. We're born, we live around 80 years, then we die. If you go through calorie restriction, you can extend lifespan. But the point is normally we live about 80 years. So if you one day end up practicing medicine, you'll practice medicine for a big chunk of your life, maybe late 20s, early 30s, until retirement. So this is a long, happy career of helping lots of people, practicing the thing you love. So, so this is a big chunk of your life. So therefore, to reach this dream and, and have this, this chunk of your life practicing medicine, you really need to take this small period of your life extremely seriously. This small time of your life while you're studying for the MCAT will determine what kind of future you'll have. So really, it's not that long. You don't have that. It's, it's not that big of a sacrifice. So I recommend during this time, during this time of your life, taking it really seriously, really putting in the time and effort and, and, and taking this seriously because this small period of your life will have implications for the rest of your life. So sometimes what I recommend is again, while studying for the MCAT, sometimes it doesn't hurt to take an extra gap year because if you take an extra gap year, you can postpone your application so you can have a little more time studying for the MCAT. And I know when I first were, when someone recommended to me to take a gap year, I thought, no, I, I immediately ignored them and I did not want to take that extra gap year and postpone my application. However, at the end of the day, I think it was a good choice. And I know at the moment when you're asked to take a gap year, that, that small, that, that difference between not taking a gap year and studying for the MCAT versus taking a gap year and that small difference seems like forever seems like an eternity and it does and, it, and a lot of people will immediately turn away they're turned off by that idea however i strongly recommend this mcat is a hard exam it takes time to familiarize yourself and to master all those ideas so i hi if i could give one bit of advice i would recommend consider taking the gap year. Consider putting in a little more time so you can study for the MCAT and really master those concepts and really best prepare yourself to get a good MCAT score so you can have that future practicing medicine.